All right, this is a continuation of notes for 1A uh, from the Math 4 course. And so we're going to pick up uh, after example 4. These definitions are positive and negative, and this is uh, for positive regions, it is the uh, set of all x values. when y value is positive. And likewise, when it is negative. So let's play with this a minute. Now, um, the negative you know, the, the positive and negative is, is surprisingly simple, but almost deceptively so. Negative is basically anything that lives under the x-axis, y is negative. Anything that lives above the x-axis, y is positive. Now, the thing, you know how we had those uh, tops of the um, roller coaster and the bottom of the roller coaster and how it was changing direction and we couldn't count it? We had to put parentheses uh, around stuff because that point actually didn't count the solution. Well, we're going to run into the same situation here because that spot right there at negative one, two, three, uh, where x is negative three, what's the what's the y value? Yeah, y value is zero. Remember how we said that things either had to be positive or negative? If they're sitting on the x-axis, the y value is zero, and they are neither. It is just like the, the mountaintops and the, the valleys for increase, decrease. But here, the places where we're having to kind of skip things, and there's one right there that we're going to have to watch every time that our graph touches the x-axis. And that's going to create a gap in what we're doing. Now, for, and again, we're paying attention to what y is doing, but we are writing one, two, three, four. We are writing what X is doing. And that is three, and that is seven, and that is nine. That is negative three, and that is three. And we don't have to worry. Well, that's positive. We don't have to worry about the rest. All right. So, uh, well, uh, we'll start with positive. That's the guy at the bottom. He goes from where x is negative 3 to where x is positive 3, and everything between that is above the x-axis. But because negative 3 and 3 are on the axis, y counts as 0, so they don't count as positive values. So we have to do parentheses instead of brackets. Now, the negative, there are actually two places where it happens. One is between negative 4 and 3. Oh, that's right, negative 4. Uh, is a starting place there is a dot there and so we'll go negative four to negative three parenthesis and then union that with the other green shaded part which goes from three to nine and nine is a stopping point that does not disappear into some unknown oh wait a minute hang on i forgot about the seven didn't i we got to go from three to seven and then stop and pause and pick up on the other side of seven and go to nine and then do the bracket for nine. There are actually technically three chunks uh, in, uh, that are negative here. And where X is seven is actually breaking up one of the chunks because uh, when X is seven, Y is zero and that means it's not negative. All right, let's move on. End behavior. Um, uh, this one's a tough one to describe as x approaches negative infinity. What is y doing? As x approaches positive infinity, what is y doing? And, uh, you know, uh, that is probably not a very clear definition, but that is the crux of the matter. That, that is what you need to know. Uh, and so there are going to be two statements, usually, when they ask about end behavior. 
what happens as x disappears off the left side of the graph? What's y doing? And what happens when x disappears off the right side of the graph? What's y doing? Is it going up or down? Or is it converging on some number? All right, uh, here we're going to describe the end behaviors of these different graphs. Uh, and you're going to notice something that happens fairly often. Whoops, um, I need a little bit more space. Just about all of them, unless there is like an endpoint. And, you know, a lot of the graphs that you're going to wind up doing on a test are going to have, you know, if there's no dot on the end of it, then we presume that it's going on forever. Uh, so just about all of these are going to start out in this fashion. As x approaches negative infinity, y is doing what? As x approaches positive infinity, y is doing what? Now, I'm going to leave this one blank because x doesn't go toward infinity at this point. And so we're, we're going to deal with that one. And here we're back to this question again. As x approaches, uh, well, I, I'm going to go ahead and do this one. I'll just, I guess I'll work my way back. Um, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 4. That is 7 and 9. All right, so as x approaches negative 4, because that's as far as it goes, y is going to drop down to negative 5, and that's as far as it goes. And so, you know, when it stops partway on the graph like this, instead of going off into the sunset, um, you're going to get some different kind of answers. As x approaches, and it's not approaching infinity because it's only going to 9. So as x approaches 9, then y is doing what? y is going toward negative 2. Now, somebody would argue, but Mr. G, here's a spot where it goes even lower than negative 2. Why are we ignoring that? And my response is the word end behavior. Um, that low spot right there is not at the end of the graph. This black dot over here is, and so that's the thing that we're kind of focusing on here. Uh, what is the end on the left and on the right side? What are the ends doing? You know, can we describe this? All right, let's back up to this guy. As x approaches negative infinity, y is going off the chart in a positive sense, so it will go positive infinity. But now as x is approaching, it gets as far as 4, and it gets up as far as 6. So as x approaches 4, y is going to approach 6, and then it's going to stop. Uh, so we can't really go beyond that. Now these guys are probably more the traditional style of endpoint questions, and it's the kind of thing that you're going to see on most quizzes and tests. Now here, as x approaches the negative side, y is going down too, so that's going to be negative infinity. But as x approaches the right side, as x is getting uh, more positive, y is going up, so it's going to do that. Now these guys, as x is getting less, y is going down, negative infinity. As x is getting greater, y is still going down, negative infinity. And so that's the way that you're going to respond with most of these. All right. Let's see now. Now we're going to take on two graphs, and we're going to try to answer all of these. Um, so the domain here, the x's start at negative 5 and they stop at 10. Um, and because negative 5 has a closed circle, we're going to do that. But because 10 has an open circle, we're going to do that. Now, meanwhile, the range 
goes from negative three, gets this low, and then it goes up as far as positive three. And once again, I get a bracket for the negative three because there's a solid dot down there, but there is an open circle on the other end. So I'm gonna do that. Now let's see, X intercepts, I have negative four zero and four zero. And for the Y intercept, I have zero two. My maximum is gonna wind up being three and my minimum is gonna wind up being negative three. And you're gonna notice kind of a correlation between this and these two. Because your max and your min, you know, if they're, if they're not asking for, uh, well, let me, let me rephrase the question. Um, if they're asking for relative min or absolute max or something like that, uh, I want it to be an ordered pair because you should be able to point to one dot and say that's where it is. But uh, if they just ask for a max and a min, they just want to know how high does Y get, how low does Y get, and answering with Y only uh, is perfectly fine. Now, let's look at this graph in terms of increasing and decreasing and positive and negative. And remember, I said that the trick is to watch what Y is doing, but write what X is doing. Um, now, that is a point where it stops increasing. And then over here at four, it has a valley and then it starts going up again. And then that is 10 over there. So we're gonna say the increasing happens from negative five, where X is negative five to zero. Um, and the zero gets a parenthesis because it's the top of the mountain. It's neither going up nor down. So it doesn't count. Now, um, then it starts decreasing. So we're going to say from zero to four. And then from four, it starts increasing again. And it goes up to 10. And 10 has an open circle. So he gets a parenthesis too. I kind of like drawing it this way. You'll notice that I have the negative five to the zero and then the zero to the four and then the four to the 10. It's almost like, you know, relay runners handing off the baton uh, from one to the other. And um, to me, it gives a sense of, you know, between the increasing and the decreasing, I have covered the entire graph. I didn't leave anything out. And this is kind of the order that it comes in. Uh, uh, something feels right when I do it that way. I, I'm not gonna count it wrong if you don't, you know, space it like that or anything like that. But I just, I felt it is helpful uh, to arrange it that way. Uh, it gives me a better visual on what's happening. Now for the positive and negative, you got to remember that only this is positive, only that is positive. It takes a break at four because y is zero where four is. So my positive is going to pick up from negative four. Let's go all the way up and across to positive four. It's going to take a break at four and come out the other side and go up to positive 10. And all of that is above the x-axis. That's where everything is positive. Everything below the x-axis, y is negative. But the only place that, you know, the only x's that are involved in that is from negative five to negative four. And negative five does get a bracket. Now for n behavior, we've got as x approaches, on the low end, it's gonna be negative five y is approaching negative three. And then we say as x approaches on the positive end, uh, it's okay to say 10, even though it never reaches 10, it's approaching 10. That's what the arrow technically says, as x approaches 10, doesn't say it has to reach it. You know, we talk about x approaching infinity. How do you reach infinity? It just keeps going. So uh, as X approaches 10, Y is actually creeping up toward positive three. So that's how that would be done. Um, last set, our domain. Um, you know, that has a dot there and a dot there. And I'm going to presume that because there's not a dot here, they intended 
for an open circle to be there. Otherwise, they would would have put a dot there. So uh, I'm I'm sort of adding to the drawing a bit. Uh, sometimes you kind of have to reason your way through that. If they wanted a dot there, they would have put it there. So that must be their way. Of, you know, and sometimes people are using different softwares to draw their graphs, and uh, sometimes it's more user friendly than not. Anyway. Uh, the domain starts at negative infinity and continues all the way over here until x is 8. Oh, that is a uh, solid point, so we'll put a bracket there. Now, meanwhile, the range, that is as low as it gets. That is where x is, two, uh, where y is 2. And that is an open circle, so I'm going to do a parenthesis there, and that is supposed to be positive too. And uh, at this point, everything above that is covered somewhere, somehow on the graph, including an arrow up to infinity. X intercepts, I got nothing. Y intercepts, I do have one right there where Y is three. The maximum. I don't have one because of the arrow going out of sight. Uh, the minimum, I can't really say that y is 2. But what I can do is I can say y is greater than 2. Uh, that gives me the sense of the open circle. And uh, I, you know, my minimum is going to be getting as close to 2 as possible uh, without actually being 2. Now, uh, let's look at increase and decrease. Uh, and let's you know, kind of break this up into chunks because it is decreasing from negative infinity all the way up to here, which is negative three. And then it is increasing to uh, negative one, but it is still increasing that solid dot covers the gap left by that open circle. So it is still increasing all the way up here to eight. So we can say that it's increasing from negative three all the way up to eight, and eight is a solid dot ending. It is decreasing from negative infinity all the way up to negative three. Now, as far as the positive is concerned, um, it's all above the x-axis. So there's going to be no negatives down here. Uh, what I can say is that it is positive, and, and we said that there was no break in this. That solid circle and that open circle kind of cover each other. There's no break in the x's all the way until 8. So it is positive all the way from negative infinity until you get to positive 8. Now for the end behaviors, as x is approaching on the low end, it will approach negative infinity. y is going up forever, which means that y is approaching positive infinity. Now on the other end, as x is approaching what is 8, y is getting up as far as 11. Okay. That is it for your notes for four, uh, math four, unit 1A.